In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the look from the film Amelie. Your footage will go from this to this in just a few nodes. In case this is your first time here, I'm Fred Trevino. I've been a professional colorist for Beanbox Studio in New York City for the past 15 years. I've created over 60 feature length films and hundreds of projects for companies like Google, ESPN, HBO, Under Armour, just to name a few. I want this channel to be all about the creative side of color grading. There's plenty of channels out there, great channels that focus mainly on the technical stuff, color theory, color space transform, monitors, things like that. But here I wanna focus mainly on the creative side, which is what gets you work, what gets you noticed, and what gets you working with high-end companies. So with that being said, let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do, as I said, the awesome film Amelie, which if you haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing with yourself. I don't know what you're doing with your life. You should definitely see it 100% because it is going to be one of the best films you ever see. And this is the look we're recreating. Um, and the clip we're using is this one. So we're going to make this clip look like this clip here. So the first thing I want to talk about actually, before we even jump into the grade. This film is a perfect example of how important production uh, and set dressing and art design and the art department is to a movie in terms of look. And so I've said this before, and the number one thing that I usually answer when someone asks me, what's the most important thing I can do when I want to get a look for my film and they're expecting me to say shoot and log or use this camera or use that camera or use that LUT or make sure you use this color space, things like that. But what I always tell people is your set dressing, your wardrobe is probably the most important thing if you want to create a look for your film that 80% of what you do is done on set, is done through the cinematography and through the set dressing. And Amelie is a perfect example of that. And I would even say that most of the films where they have a look that you love, most of that look is baked into the set dressing and the wardrobe. So for example, Amelie has a color scheme where if you look through all the stills, it's very heavy on the greens, very saturated greens, very saturated reds, and then very warm highlights, skin tones, right there between the kind of the, the orange warmth and the yellow warmth. I mean, and you can see that here, as I scroll through, you can see very warm skin tones, a pop of red and green in the background. You can see it on this shot here as you scroll down. I mean, you see this throughout the entire movie. This is the kind of stuff you don't notice when you're watching a movie, because you're just watching a movie. But again, a lot of green backgrounds, a lot of pops of red, pops of green. Again here, you know, look at this red set dressing, very warm highlights. You know, that's a khaki coat or, you know, but look, it's green, his shirt is green. And I can just keep going through a lot of these stills. That's the color schemes that we're seeing, okay? And I'm just gonna keep scrolling down so you can keep seeing examples. Same thing here in the bar, pops of very saturated reds, green backgrounds, you know, that's just, you know. Overall, like I said, bright reds, bright greens, and warm skin tones. So, so I just wanted to bring that up so that you completely understand, you know, like in this shot, how important wardrobe, set dressing, all that stuff is. And so with that being said though, I chose a shot. This was probably one of the, the grades where it was hardest to find a shot. And then this is the best I could do on this one because she has a pop of red, there's red here, there's the green pillars in the background, and I'm basically gonna try to match that. Even blue, Amelie also have pop, very pops of very saturated blues. Um, and so this is a good foundation uh, for the look that we're creating because the cinematography and all that was so important. So that explains what I saw in this look and what I'm going to add to this look. So the first thing I did when I noticed this shot here is, you know, she's just kind of blown out here. She has very light skin, white shirt. So I simply made an adjustment to the overall exposure as I typically do in the HDR tools overall exposure, just because it has a nice optical quality adjustment. Did that. And then I moved on to the next node. And again, I stayed in the HDR tools and I adjusted the lights, the brighter parts of an image 
You see, again, I was just trying to get to a, a very good base image, which was this. You can see how much more came back in her skin, more than anything. Okay. And again, that's just going here. And that's the images that I adjusted, all these kind of bright spots. You know, but don't worry, I didn't really want to, you know, bring down too much of everything. And so I then went through and as is everything with color grading, it's everything is pushing and pulling and you brighten something and you bring things back and it's this very back and forth thing. And so because I, on this one, I very specifically targeted the brightest parts of the image, that was really just to get a very good base image for everything, okay? And then I came in and adjusted the exposure overall. Okay, and brighten everything up again. So rather than having super bright white face, white shirt, and everything else was okay, I brought her down, adjusted it, and just made it so that everything kind of fits a little bit better. It was here, and I brought everything up a little bit. Okay, and so then what I did next is the part that will start really pushing it towards this look, and I again selected the lighter parts of the image, because if you look at this image here, you know, all the highlights here, all the brightest areas and the skin tones have this very nice warm kind of red, yellow tone to them. And so I went through here and made those adjustments in the highlights to start pushing it in that direction. And you can see we're getting closer. It's not perfect. It may not even look great yet, but stick with me. It'll get closer. We're moving in that direction. And if you see what I selected here, you can see that I selected everything that I wanted, which is the brightest parts of the image, especially her skin tones and the shirt and the brightest parts of everything. So again, from this to this, and we're getting much closer. Okay, and so then the next two steps are probably among the most complicated. And, I, what, I, and what I did is I really wanted to start pushing the greens and really make these pop because with the adjustments I've made so far, it kind of made these green posts a little too yellow for my taste. Um, and for the look that I'm going for, I really wanted these greens to really pop and stand out uh, much like they do in Amelie. So, and so what I did, I actually keyed the greens, anything that's green in this shot, and I used a subtractive color method, if you're not familiar with that, that's simply right clicking on the node, going into color space, selecting hue saturation value as your color space, and then on the channels, turning off uh, channel one and channel three, and just leaving channel two checked off, and that will introduce a more film-like saturation, which creates deeper darker saturation compared to digital, which is more of like a neon electric, you know, saturation that's very saturated, very bright. And this is a movie where it's obviously shot on film and it has very film-like characteristics. You know, without going down a rabbit hole, it just has, you know, you know, very tainted shadows and colors. And you know, that was all done in the film process, film printing process in the cinematography, and it's a really big part of the look. Let me turn this on really quick. There you go. I knew I couldn't get, you know, very digital green, so I did that. You see how vibrant and saturated the columns are now, and even the, the ground here, the little bit of green that was in the ground. And so the way I did that was over here in the primary wheels, I simply, you know, adjusted the gain. And when you adjust the gain is when, you know, versus just adjusting the saturation here to tweak the saturation and that sort of subtractive color method, you just simply raise or lower the gain. And so I did that. And I also pushed in the primaries offset, I pushed it more towards those kind of greens, yellows right down in pretty much the middle of that wheel to push the greens of the key and also to increase the saturation in those areas by adjusting the gain. And so it started coming together and that was more of a subtractive color approach to get those deep greens. 
you can see we're getting much closer. And then getting to the end, I kind of made a look adjustment and I wanted, I stuck with the same subtractive color method, HSV, turning off channels one and three. And I just wanted to play with the saturation to see how much more I can get out of it. And for this one, I did overall saturation and I just gave everything a little boost to really kind of give it that look, this very kind of exaggerated, vibrant, film-like Amelie look. Okay, and then the last thing I did here, you won't see, I basically added glow to all the highlights, so that's pretty much the look. Okay, and so then I'm going to go into full screen, turn everything off, this is where we started, and we did overall exposure, highlights just in the brights, and then bringing everything up again to balance it, Warmth, warmed up the highlights, really pushed them in a film-like way, and then the greens, brought up the greens. Again, more subtractive saturation. Okay, and then here, I just turned on the glow, which you won't be able to see, but if I hit play, the glow was simply taking the highlights here. It's one of the OFX plugins here, and I simply made an adjustment to the shine threshold here. Um, I did play with the hue saturation ratio to try to get something else kind of cool going, but really, I mean, I kept it simple and I just adjusted how much glow in any of the brightest areas to just kind of add this whenever we hit play and just add a little bit more intrigue to the shot. And you can see here's the finished look. And if we cut to this, you can see, as usual, they live in the same world, they have the same look. And there you go. So that is how you create an Amelie look. And just to show you how these kind of concepts work, here's another shot. So if this was your film, let's say you had a close up and wanted to apply the look, you know, you could simply save it. I'll apply the look. Boom, there you go. And there you go. Here's another example how you can see how the glow does something to the background to make it more interesting. You could then go through here, make adjustments. Like the only thing I would do here is add a node and then just maybe boost the exposure a little bit. And now this shot here kind of has the look you're going for. Okay, so that's it. It was a pretty simple process to get the look. I hope in this channel you're really learning not only the steps to do these looks, I think hopefully you're learning how to look at footage, how to analyze footage, how to break it down so that you can create these looks on your own. You'll never be a great colorist by simply watching videos, seeing the steps, and duplicating those steps because it might work for some footage, but if you actually wanna have great looks for your projects, you have to learn how to look at a shot, how to analyze it, how to break it down, and how to know how to create a look from scratch or how to copy a look or be inspired by a look and move that information and move that look over to your footage. So again, hope you learned something. Like, subscribe, there's more videos coming, and I'll see y'all next time.